Now, after the verdict, several family members of the victims were given the opportunity to address the court and the defendant. One of the most emotional statements was from Giselda's brother, Joey Cantu. It is our testimony of the day. My name is Joey Cantu. Shelly, you started to come through with many things. And yes, she was a drug addict. She was a prostitute and she was a felon. But she wasn't over these things. And maybe one day she would have ceased in being these things as her family had always hoped. But you have forever robbed us of that hope that one day she would come back to us. It is said that hope springs eternal. And it's true until someone like you comes along completely and utterly destroys that hope. You'll, ne you'll hear no cliches from me about my sister, that she was this or she was that. My sister was a good person, yes, but she did bad things. Bad things not motivated by madness, not motivated by hate, but by, by addiction, by her disease. She was sick, as were the rest of these girls. I'll tell you what my sister was and what always will be. She would always be the six-year-old little girl. She was all I had, bro. She was all I had left. You took the last living member of my family, man. She would always be the six-year-old little girl who would wake up in the middle of the night to walk her eight-year-old brother to the restroom because I was scared of the dark. She will always be the little sister who defended me from bullies when we were in elementary school, even fist fighting them. And she'll always be the little sister who cried just because she saw me crying. My sister was empathetic and she was compassionate as evidenced by your conversation with her. Her knowing what was likely going to happen to her and still choosing to talk you out of suicide. Showing you compassion, sympathy. She did not beg for her life. She begged for your life. She told you it didn't matter what you had done, that God would forgive you, that God would always love you. And that was my sister in a nutshell. And in the face of that empathy and compassion that was surely God given, you responded by violently taking her life. I guess it's true, I guess it's true that no good deed goes unpunished. I've now had to live a life in which I've I've endured and suffered the murder of my mother, the murder of my father, and now the murder of my sister. It would be so easy to hate you. Too easy, but I've always abhorred the path of least resistance, and I don't hate you. I don't hate you at all. And I won't hate you, but I do hate what you did. Not only to her, but to all of us. And here's the irony. Roughly 26 and a half years ago, I stood where you now stand, accused and convicted of murder, sentenced to 40 years in the Texas Department of Criminal Justice. I spent 22 and a half of my, 22 years and 11 months of my life in prison from the age of 15 to the age of 38. When I was granted parole, the sister of my victim wrote me and told me that she forgave me for what I had done and that I should forgive myself as well. And now I find myself here in front of the person who killed my little sister. And I want you to know that I forgive you. And I hold no ill will towards you, man. I pray that one day you find the peace that you have ripped away from all of us. You spoke of God's ability for miracles. Well, your miracle is that you, you get to continue living, to continue to see and hear from your loved ones while we no longer can. When in any other circumstance, you would be facing a death sentence. And know that it was me, the brother of Giselda, who asked the DA to consider going without the death penalty. Because your family has suffered as well. No parent should ever have to watch their child die, even yours. I leave you with the words of my sister. No matter what you've done, it doesn't matter. God will forgive you and God loves you. May you find peace and freedom in him. But I'll forever wonder if maybe Erica was not who she was, if Erica was not a prostitute and a drug addict, if, swift, if swifter action could have been taken, would they have believed her and should have been an upstanding citizen? Would it have taken four hours to find him? Three hours, two hours, however long it took. You're not entirely your fault. We were failed at times by the justice system too. 
All right, and here with us now is Joey Cantu, the brother of Giselda Cantu. Joey, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, first and foremost, let me uh, provide our deepest condolences from all of us here at Court TV for, for your loss and what you had to endure uh, during the course of that trial. Truly appreciate it. Um, let me start right there um, with the trial. Um, the family members out there in force, tell me what it was like when you finally heard the verdict and you knew that you got a guilty verdict in this case. Honestly, what, what did it take, like four or five hours, I guess? Well, you know, a bunch of the families were stressing out and I just kept telling myself that, I mean, everything that happens in this world, you know, is God's will. And, you know, I, I knew whatever came, you know, whether he was found guilty or not guilty, you know, that's, I mean, that's God's will. And I kept telling myself, I have to remember that who am I to question my creator, you know? And I mean, I don't think anything happens, but with the permission of God. So I, I didn't let it get to me. And when he was found guilty, it was, it was a relief, but my closure came a long time ago. My, my closure, none of that, none of that was... None, the trial, nothing had anything to do with my closure. I made my peace with what happened when it happened. You know, one of the most extraordinary things about your statement uh, yesterday was the fact that you were in a position to need and receive grace. Then you turned around in that courtroom, you expressed yourself, but you gave grace. Tell me about that, that, that process of being in a position of needing it and getting grace and realizing that that perhaps was the best way to approach this situation. I mean, I just, I just remember, I just, I remember the day that I got the letter from, 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 from the person who gave me, you know, who gave me forgiveness. I remember how I felt, I guess, free. I felt like something had been lifted off me that I've been carrying around, you know, for almost 23 years. And it was, and it was amazing to feel that, you know what I mean? Because how many people can actually forgive someone who takes somebody from them? You know, any other time, I don't think I would have been able to do it. I don't think I wouldn't have had the strength to do something like that. It's so much easier to hate somebody for when, when they hurt you. And that lady, and, you know, and, and my God, you know, gave me the strength for that. And, you know, maybe now, maybe right now he doesn't want forgiveness and he doesn't need, he doesn't need to ask for it. You know, it's freely given. You know, the, forget, the person he needs to ask for forgiveness is God, not me. I forgive him regardless. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, who's a little guy there with you? Oh, that's my son. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how you doing, little buddy? What's his name? <laughs> Mateo. Mateo. Wow, my son's yeah. middle name is Mateo. So look at that. Oh, there you um, go. Let me. Uh, you know what I want to give you a chance to do here? Um, you talked. Uh, you talked about your sister a little bit in the courtroom, but tell us a little bit more about her. We made a big point here at Court TV to make sure in a trial like this that we know who these victims are. This is about more than just the trial and the charges and the defendant. Tell us about Kiselda. I mean. I said, I said it then, you know, I mean, in a nutshell that, I mean, she was always empathetic. She wasn't always an empathetic person. You know, she always sympathized with people. She was compassionate. She cared about people. And as a little girl, I mean, she was always the first one to, you know, try to comfort somebody, you know, stuff like that. She was always happy. You know, I don't know whatever happened. I mean, obviously I got locked up. She was still young. She was maybe 13 when I, when I got incarcerated. So I don't know what happened in, in between those years. But when I knew my sister, I mean, she was just, she was amazing to be around. She was funny. She was quick to crack a joke on you, quick to roast you, you know, quick to talk smack to you. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what I can say. Just that she was, she was just happy to be around. She was always the life. You know what I mean? She always brought a smile to people because she was silly. Well, that's enough. That, that's, that's exactly what, what you should be saying. Sounds like all of our sisters. Um, you were instrumental, it sounded like, or at least part of, uh, the decision not to seek the death penalty in this case. Tell me about that decision, and do you still think it was the right one? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, 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 I don't think anyone but God has a decision uh, to say who dies and when they die. You know, but that, that's not it alone. Like I said, when I spoke to his mother, you know, I, I felt her pain so much, and it broke my heart to see her like that because... I watched my grandmother, that's who raised me. I watched her go through the same thing when when I did what I did. And that hurt me, it killed me every day of my life. For You know, as long as she was alive, she died while I was in prison in 2012. And 
it hurt me. It hurt me to see her like that, and I and I felt her pain. And I, like I said, I don't think anybody should have to watch their son die. Cause, I mean, obviously, if you get the death penalty, you're gonna get killed. And you know, nine times out of ten, maybe his mom is young enough to still be around and have to see that. And and at the end of the day, everybody deserves a second chance, whether you get out of prison or not. You know what I mean? You have a, you can still correct your life. You know, you can still get everything straight while you're inside. That's why I told him that I, I hope he finds the peace and freedom he needs, you know, in Christ in there. And I mean, that second chance is it's better. It's better than nothing. It's better than my sister had. My sister didn't get that same opportunity. Yeah, fair enough. Joey Contu, thank you so much for taking out the time uh, to be with us here tonight and share your story and share this with us. We truly, truly appreciate it. We all here wish the absolute best for you and your family going forward. Thank you. All right, you're welcome.